So welcome to another episode of the Women Petpreneurs podcast with your host, Mario Quendo. So my guest today um, is Marsha Strong, and I am so excited that she's here. You have no idea. Okay. <laughs> Thank um, you for having me. This is amazing. Yeah. Well, you know, I almost kind of feel like I'm a little bit into like grooming royalty here. Oh, please. I feel the same. Oh, okay. So we have like this mutual admiration society coming on, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, right, I've so heard I'll, your name forever, and I was like super excited to be invited on your podcast. So thank you. So, um, and I'll tell you why as we get into the podcast. I'll tell you why I'm like just so excited that she's here. Okay, so let's first start off with um, how did you get involved in the pet industry to start off with? Um, so I'm 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 already going on a little tangent here. I'm just gonna. I people have given me heck about this for years. My name is pronounced Marcia. <laughs> <laughs> and I feel so pretentious when I correct people on it. And then everybody's like, because half of my clients call me Marsha, half of my family calls me Marsha and I am too polite to say anything. And a lot of people say, no, you have to correct people because then people feel bad when they don't say your name, right? No, and no, that's actually years later that they've been calling you Marsha for the last 10 years. They find out your name's Marcia and you're like, oh, so my name is Marcia. <laughs> okay. See, 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 my name is Mary. It never gets mispronounced. Except, there you go. Except by my mother-in-law. Oh, is that intentional? Is that a little, is yeah. that an intentional thing? Maybe? She calls me, she calls me Mary. Mary. Does she have an accent or only when she says your name? Only when she says my name. Mm, that's suspicious. <laughs> just, just an ooch, right? <laughs> a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> so Marcia. Marcia. <laughs> welcome um, to the show. Thank you. Thank you, Mary. I appreciate it. Um, so to answer your actual question, I got into the pet industry. Um, I wanted to be a veterinarian my entire life. I just wanted to work with animals. And uh, unfortunately, I hate school. So a veterinarian was not going to work out for me. And I decided to go into a vet tech program through a college. And I also realized that school was not my thing and vet tech was going to cost me a lot of money. So I started looking at other avenues and to actually start saving money to become, to go to the vet tech program, I got a job in a grooming salon and the lady took me in and trained me. And she made me realize that like, this could be a real career. This is awesome. I'm spending my days with dogs. I had no idea. Nobody goes to high schools and says, you know, look at this amazing career. This is an amazing opportunity for somebody who has a passion for animals and, and maybe an artistic side and likes to be busy with their hands and their minds all day. I really wish somebody would go around to schools and, and show people that this is an amazing career to be in. But unfortunately, that's not the case. And I'm just really lucky. I mean, especially since there's such a groomer shortage and there's also a vet tech source um, shortage. Oh, huge. You know, everyone's complaining. They can't get into their vet. Well, you know, there's like no emergency hospitals um, around here because there's no one to staff them. Oh, exactly. And I mean, a vet tech, I have all the respect in the world for them. Grooming is not an easy job and being a vet tech is not an easy job either. Those are long hours and that's a hard job. Yeah. And I also started off, I thought I was going to be a veterinarian. <laughs> Lasted yeah. two years, in, two years into college. And then I got pregnant and got married. Oh, and but you made it into college. Good for you. I, I didn't even make it that far. I made it to looking at the application to applying to the university. And then I said, no, thank you. <laughs> but 10 years of school does not sound great to me. And the student loans sound even worse. So I wanted to get into the workforce right away. Yeah. And I, at any time and knowing how much um, veterinarian college actually costs. So yeah. when my vet gives me the bill, I don't question it. That's what you oh, want. No. Yeah. They're not yeah. driving Jaguars. No, and they're not making money until, you know, 20 years into their careers. And then they're what, 10 years away from retirement. So yeah. Plus so, the staff, yeah. like when yeah. I lived in Connecticut, my, um, my vet hospital was like a complete hospital. It had diagnostic equipment there. 
they could do, well, they couldn't do CAT scans. They could do x-rays and, and all sorts of things like that. They had a full lab in there yeah. and then they had the staff to run it. You know what? That costs money. Oh, huge. Yeah. They have a huge overhead. Yeah. You know, and I, then I, I mean, I say that, you know, I didn't want to go to school for 10 years, but it probably took me 10 years to learn how to be a really good dog groomer too. So, yeah. you know, <laughs> I just learned in a different way. I wasn't in a classroom. Well, I think everybody learns differently too. Yeah. I like to learn in snippets, which is why I love masterclass. It's like $99 for the year. And yeah. it has all of these wonderful programs. And I'm learning photography in like 10 minute intervals. That, and that's as much as I can absorb at one time. Yeah. Because after that, my brain just goes blank. <laughs> Nothing's yeah. sinking in. No, so yeah. in 10 minute intervals and why, in fact, I watched a 10 minute interval just before coming on to this podcast on, and what? on photography. Cause that's, oh. that's, that's, that's my new thing. Yeah. That's lovely. And so I'm going to practice what I learned afterwards. And then I'll watch another like 10 minute, you know, interval, learn something else, put it to practice. So it's wonderful. So if anybody yeah. is, is even on the fence about masterclass, it's $99 for the year. At least that's what it was. And you have unlimited access? Unlimited access. Oh, that's interesting. I had never even heard of it. Oh, go to masterclass.com. Yeah. I'll check it out. Might have missed it. Do you want me to do that right now? Yeah, you should. If you're listening to this, go do this right now. Okay. Yeah, this is best not advice you're going to get from me. But feel free, feel free to sponsor Masterclass. Yeah, right, right. I should have a conversation with them. Hey, listen, I'm promoting your class on here. Maybe you give me yeah. a year for free. Okay. Yeah. It's only 99 bucks. 99 bucks. Exactly. And it's, it's continuing education. So I, I claim that on my taxes. Win win. Win win. Perfect. Okay. So where were we? I don't remember. <laughs> I can sing a whole song from the 1980s for you right now, but don't ask me what we were talking about three minutes ago. I have no idea. Yeah, I'm not gonna, like, you know what? On the other podcast I do with Chris, Chris actually takes notes. All right. So that when we get a little off topic, she goes, Oh, we, we were talking about this. And I'm like, I have no idea what we were just talking about, but okay, whatever. So we'll just go on to a new topic. Okay. Perfect. <laughs> All right. So, you know what? I'm going to say why I was so excited that you wanted to come on to the podcast with me. It's like, Oh my God, I love your videos. All right. So if somebody doesn't know where to find your videos, where would they be? The best place to find them is on my TikTok. My account is called I like dogs more than you. And you can take that however you want. I might like the dogs more than I like you, or I might like the dogs more than you like dogs. Everyone asks me, so how am I supposed to take that? Yeah, you can take it however you want. (laughs) However you heard it. (laughs) However you read it first is how you should take it. Yeah. So a friend of mine put up a a little meme and it's hashtag an album cover, but that is not how you read it. Like a bum cover? (laughs) Did my mind go to the right place at all? I read it. I read it as (laughs) anal bum cover. (laughs) Oh, (laughs) see, my mind didn't take it that far down the ground. (laughs) <laughs> but but so you know what you take things as you as, as exactly, yeah, to you. Yeah, exactly yeah and so tiktok's the best place to find my videos i post some of them on youtube but i think i would like to take my youtube in a more educational direction and leave the tiktok for the silly nonsense all right so i'm going to tell you my favorite one that you did all right. Okay. And why it's my favorite. So you did one and you were doing like the different breeds, but you also had the husband helping you with grooming. Okay. And so and this yep. is why I was like literally on the floor laughing on that one. So when I went mobile, I went mobile in 2002, it was a fairly new thing. And you know, my husband was concerned. So he took a week off for work. He took a vacation week so he could drive with. Me. That's wonderful. You got a good husband, eh? That's wonderful. Yeah. And I was really glad one time he did come because I'm pretty sure someone was planning on stiffing me and took one look at my husband and thought better of that. Good. Okay. Um, 
but then I had two German shepherds and they followed me from the corporate that I were. And these dogs were much better suited in a mobile. They did not do well in a shop. One was cage aggressive and the other one was fear aggressive. All right. So yeah. the, the environment was not good for them. And so they did, they were going to do better in a mobile van, but they are huge shepherds. Now, <clears throat> have you ever seen the painter suit, that white painter suit? Oh yeah. Okay. So my husband got one of those from work and he puts on the white because he knows there's going to be a lot of hair. So he puts that on and then, you know, he ties it around the face and just his face is showing and he's covered in this white paper painter suit. Okay. Yeah. And he actually, once the hair started flying, he had to leave. He oh. sat outside the van and my client had to give him a paper bag so he could breathe. Really? I, you know what? I say really, I'm not surprised at all. A lot of people have no idea how much hair we actually deal with on a daily basis. Yeah, well, those shepherds were probably a little bit more hair than normal because he yeah. did okay up until the shepherds. Yeah. And to his credit, he lasted the full week with me and said, you know what? You got this. Yeah. If you need my help, let me know. And here's the kicker on that one, right? The male shepherd liked my husband. Oh, is that the one that was fear aggressive? No, that one was cage aggressive. Oh, okay. But he liked my husband and he was so well behaved when my husband was there. I would swear the two of them are going back and forth bitching about me. <laughs> like maybe you should groom this dog. He yeah. seems to like you more. He seems to like you more and like guys everywhere, right? So it was a male and a female shepherd. The female shepherd took all of like three grooms. I always see three is like the magic number. Took it three grooms true. and she realized, you know what? If I just behave myself, I'm out of here so much faster. Yeah. That male shepherd didn't get that concept ever, ever. <laughs> Do you find that about male dogs versus female dogs? Do you find any difference between grooming the two? I think so. Too. Yeah. I find I, honestly and truly, I think the female dogs, um, I think they get it and apply it. Yep. I agree with you. And the male dogs either never get it or they're just there to party. Yeah. And they think it's just a big party and it takes you twice as long to do the same thing where I find a lot of females, they get it. They're like, if I stand here, I get in and out and I go home. Great. Yeah. Yeah. That was, the, that was a female shepherd. She was like, I am not sitting in this truck for an hour and a half. Come on. Yeah. Up, let's go. Yeah. <laughs> oh, what happened? I love Can lost you. you. I'm back. Oh, okay. Good. I might just I need to move the mouse every now and then, I guess. Yes. <laughs> there we go. Okay. okay. All right. So, um, I'm glad you're back. Thank you. So my husband, doing those videos of my husband are by far my favorite. And he even laughs. He's, I got a very serious husband. We are, we're like the total opposites. They say opposites attract. And if you ever saw us together, people, yeah, they're like, wow, you guys are the total opposite. He is like stone faced all the time, super serious, very conservative. And I am the complete opposite. I'm like a goofy rainbow at all times. And uh, I adore making fun of him <laughs> and he even laughs at the videos and my kids think they're hilarious too. And I think I do a spot on impression of him because if even one hair floats in his direction, he's like swatting it out of the way and he's just horrified. I feel I keep a very clean shop, but he's horrified the second he walks into it. And I work from home, so it makes it a little bit worse because he's literally in the salon at all times <laughs> you know my husband's the same way too um so but that quality is actually really good it was good for me because my husband is such a neat person that i yep. literally would pay him to clean my my mobile grooming van oh i don't know if mine would ever go for that i don't think there's enough money in the world okay so this is our deal okay i paid him 50 bucks and yep. it was best cleaning my van ever got. So he would go in there like once a week and clean it so well that it just needed like general cleaning throughout the rest of the week. Yeah. And I was always would schedule the, and I like the big dogs. I love the goldens. I, I, I love the huskies. Yeah. I enjoy a D shed. 
I really enjoy it. I don't know. There must be something mentally wrong. I don't know that, you know, we just, I think it's so satisfying. It just so do I. everywhere. And you know, it's, it's, it can be minimal effort on a well-behaved dog. You're just standing there listening to music with the blow dryer and it's the before and after is beautiful and all the hair floating around is very satisfying. Seriously, that would be it. like in, in certain light, catching that in a photograph would be pretty awesome. The beautiful thing, a D shed. <laughs> it's I not beautiful so in my house, I have to admit. We don't, I don't love them in my house because that stuff just rolls everywhere. So um, it's like a whole vacuum of my entire house after a Husky's been in here. So I would have, I did this Malamute named um, Chevy. And he was not only an end of day groom, he was the end of the week groom because I would literally be knee deep in hair. And yeah. then I'd be like, hand my husband 50 bucks, have at it. You know? And every hair would be wiped out of your van. Oh, it, my van you would start, be. You could start a whole business doing that. Uh, I would hire him to come in and clean vans out. Yeah. I've always I said. I don't know how many. Sorry, I, I'll cut you off a thousand times. Just tell me to be quiet. Oh, no, 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 no. You can cut me off. We're fine. Because okay. um, I'm going to cut you off too. So you know what? Read Good. It. Do Even it. Stevens. Good. <laughs> um, yeah. So he would then take his 50 bucks that he just earned and we would go out to dinner and a movie. good deal for you. Honey, come on. <laughs> like, I'm going to pay you to do the job and then you can take me out with that money <laughs> and treat me to a dinner. That's wonderful. Yeah, I know. It almost makes me a little sad that I'm, I'm retired from grooming. So I'm retired from grooming for now a little over three years. Oh, good for, and are you enjoying being retired? Oh, okay. Let me tell you something. I thought I would miss it. And coming up to yeah. like the last days, and I had to actually physically set a date, you know, put on the calendar. Sure. This was the end date because if I didn't do that, there would never have been an end date. It would just kept moving it off, moving it off, moving it off. All right. Yeah. So I'll had just to- take one more. I'll just take one more. I'll just take this little guy. I love him. I'll just, you know, yeah. So I set a date. And once the date was set, there were no appointments made after that date. Wow. That's so final. Um, and you know what? It was sad. And yeah. I probably missed it for about three weeks, but then yeah. something happened in three weeks. My shoulders stopped hurting. Yeah. Yeah. I can, and your body started feeling better. Body started feeling better. I could sleep on my other side because yeah. I had to sleep on the one side because of the shoulder. So, but you know what? I had planned my retirement for a really long time. Right. You know, there was definitely a plan B and and I put it into motion. And so that when I set the date, of course, I set the date and I started a new business and then COVID hit. What was the new business? Positive educational training. Oh. Online, online education. I do monthly summits every single month. Where have I been? I don't know where you've been. I don't know where I've been either. I until COVID, I pretty much lived under a rock. And then I started looking into like social media more and networking and things like that. And it's amazing what's out there for groomers, especially the education and the online seminars. And And I just want to look at just a point of pride here. Okay. Yeah. When COVID hit, positive educational training held the very first online trade show before, really? before Barkley. Really? See, I'm mm-hmm. all the way up here in Canada. I, I you swear, can like, still join the membership of all the way up there in Canada. Absolutely. And I swear we, I feel like we get left out sometimes if we, if the right person isn't sharing things and we don't see things, a lot of us don't even, even with the trade shows here, a lot of people have no idea when they're happening. I have no idea. I have no idea when that trade shows in Canada are happening. See, and there's one in May and there's one in June and there's one in August and it's, they're not, um, there's, there's one, this side of the, I'm on on the West coast right now. And there's one in British Columbia 
and yeah. I find out about it after it's passed. And I'm yes. literally a couple of hours away from it. Yes, I have to cross the border into Canada, but I'm really not that far yeah. from it. No, exactly. Yeah. And there's a few in the States that I would really, I would really like to start traveling into the States this year or well, this coming year and going to trade shows. All right. So you have because options there. I mean, Groom Expo Hershey, that's the big one. You're going to have more yep. vendors. You're going to have way more education. Um, you have, I don't know where in Canada you are, but there's the New England show, which is held in Massachusetts. And I'm going to give you yeah, a word of caution on this only a 10 hour drive from me. So it's not too bad. Okay. So I'm going to give you a little bit of advice on that one. I love that okay. show. I like the small shows. Okay. Yes. The venue is horrendous. Okay. Oh no. Do not stay at the, ho okay. at the hotel. Pick. Okay. There isn't going to be a dive anywhere around the area. That's going to be worse than that particular venue. Oh okay? no. Oh, okay. All right. You don't even it's want a dog sleeping at a hotel. Yeah. Okay. So let me tell you the last okay. time I was there. Okay. So the year before, see, I, my, I had my Husky with me. All right. And he was getting older and the elevators never worked and going upstairs was, was a problem for him. Okay. That's so, a big legal issue. Elevators not working. Not working well. Okay. Oh, okay. Okay. All right. Um, so they had them there, but <laughs> whatever. Okay. So I requested, so I requested a ground floor. All right. Cause I knew on the ground floors of uh, the rooms all had the slider doors we can go right out in the morning and he didn't have to like do any real walking with him. Okay. So I get to my room and, um, this is October in new England. All right. Or this might've been even November in new England. I forget. I, I forget which, which, which so one. It snows it there. Does it snow there? It does snow that there wasn't any snow. It was cold. We're going to learn how bad I am at geography. Is it cold it's there? Is cold. One of the cold states? <laughs> it's one of the cold states. Okay. And not that it was too early for snow. It could very well have snow. It just wasn't snow yet. Right. Okay. So I get to the room and I am a New York girl. You know, the first thing I check when I get into any hotel room, my windows and my doors are locked. So I okay. open it up and I notice the door is not even fully closed. All right. So I go to close it. And you know what? It don't lock and it don't close all the way. So that's and, a problem. Yeah. That's like this, this much that's of a gap. A big, all right. And for yeah. those who are listening and not watching on YouTube, I got my fingers spread apart about an inch and a half. Okay. So I yes. call the, the front desk is like, Hey, got a problem with the slider door. Can you send somebody over? And the guy comes over and he goes, Oh yeah, that door don't lock. I'm like, yeah, I knew that. I noticed. <laughs> okay. What are we going to do about this? And yeah, you have to be like a block, a piece of wood to put into the slider. So they can't open up the door of someone, you know, and this is ground floor. Now, of course my Husky was in heaven. Because it's like either the end of October or the beginning of November. And the it's room is freezing like, in there. It's freezing in here. And he was like, oh, this is awesome. You know, meanwhile, I'm sleeping in. I'm glad I brought my flannel pajamas and many, wow. many blankets. You may as well have brought a tent. You may I as might as well have pitched a tent outside. Yeah. And I don't tent. I'm not a camper. I grew so up. I grew be up camping. And so we started off with a tent and we graduated into a tent trailer. And I will tell yep. you, my idea of camping is going to be a big old motorhome that has its own bathroom. Yeah. My idea of camping is um, a hotel with basic cable. That's camping. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not too bougie, but I don't sleep on a tent or on the ground. I've tried it. No. Yeah, 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 yeah. I've done it. I've done it my entire growing up years until I was literally oh old enough for my parents to say, hey, can I, can I stay home? And they're like, yeah, don't have a party. And I'm like, okay, I won't have a party. Promise. Promise. No partying. Yeah. No fingers are crossed. <laughs> yeah. My, and I feel my kids might be missing out on things like that, but I've said to their dad, you can take them tenting. If you feel like that's the childhood experience they need, 
I taught them to ride bikes and skate and swim and, and you can teach them how to set up a tent. <laughs> Cause I don't know. That's not something I'm willing to YouTube to learn. Yeah, no, 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 no. And, and neither would I too. So if you're going to get me into a campground, there needs to be yeah. a bed involved. And I don't mean a blow up bed. And running water. And running water and electricity. Yeah. And yeah. I will have the little satellite dish. Yep. Because, you know, I need Wi-Fi. Yep, exactly. Yeah, I might be spoiled. <laughs> I might be bougie. No, definitely, definitely. Uh, so anyway, it's a lovely, it's a lovely show. It's a small show. It's not going to have a lot of the vendors there. Different hotel. <clears throat> Stay in a different hotel. Stay in a different hotel. And okay. like I said, there are just great education. All right. <clears throat> just not the same amount of education that you would have at Hershey. So you have to kind of okay. weigh pros and cons. Um, the smaller show, which is a little bit more intimate, or a bigger show that has way more to offer, but also maybe a little overwhelming. And that's the problem. I get very overwhelmed in big crowds and um, I might look really social and fun online. And I feel like everybody that meets me in person is gonna be super disappointed because <laughs> I'm very much an introvert and big crowds kind of overwhelm me and my brain just kind of like leaks out my ear and I go into like zombie mode. So maybe a smaller show would be a better one for me to check out first. Okay. And all so, of our Canadian shows are usually pretty small. So. Okay. Like I said, I like, now that I'm here on the West coast, <clears throat> my smaller show is the Tacoma, the Northwest show. And you know what? It's, I heard that's it, a good one. It's a nice one. And is that an awesome hotel? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Oh, good. I have a lot of friends that go to that one. It's at the Murano hotel. In fact, um, I'm going to have to think about booking my hotel pretty soon. Because I'm not staying at the surrounding hotels. No? Oh, I'm staying at the Murano. Oh, okay. You want to be right in the... Right oh, in is that more? It's a much nicer hotel. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, well, I used to live in Alberta. So Tacoma was not too far to get to. So a lot of my friends from Alberta used to go to the Tacoma show. I never and made it to... And there's a, a new show in Idaho. It's the Teton show, which I was there last year. And it's a nice small show. Okay. So there's a lot to be said for the small shows. And the only two big shows that I really know of is Groom Expo and of course, Super Zoo. Super Zoo. Yeah. Have you ever been to Super yeah. Zoo? I've never been to Super Zoo, but for a long time, I, I worked for Jackie Bolton for a little bit earlier in my career. And um, she kind of introduced me to competition grooming because I didn't know it was a thing. I had no idea. I... I pretty much walked into a pet store and learned the wrong way to groom and then struggled for a few years until I walk into Jackie Bolton's shop, not knowing who she was or anything about her. So I walk in and it's just like trophies and like magazine covers and like, and blah, blah, blah. I'm here for my interview. And I was like, who's this lady? Like, and, and she gave me a job. She was very generous. <laughs> she gave me a job. And um, so I learned through her about, competition and like how much further your career can go than if you want it to you know competition isn't for everybody and um but yeah I learned through her about competitions and seminars and furthering your education so yeah you know and so and so she went to super zoo my whole point to that story was when I worked for her she was at super zoo for like my first week oh Jackie's at super zoo and then she won the jackpot that year. Oh, Jackie won the jackpot and every, and I'm like, what are you talking about? And it was like a $30,000 jackpot or something. And I was like, she won $30,000. I, you know what, even though that's not a grooming show, it's yeah. probably one of my favorite shows. Um, I like to see what's going on in the industry. Uh, and I did a little bit of retail when I was mobile. And it's for those who yeah. are wondering, you can't do retail when you're mobile. Oh, yeah, you can. Yeah. So uh, it's interesting to see the new products. I have made such great connections and um, friendships with other people in the pet industry, but not in the grooming industry. Okay. So, but uh, yeah. wear comfortable shoes. 
<laughs> I've been told it's a lot of walking. You will literally, if you got like a Fitbit or an Apple Watch or yeah. anything like that, you will watch those numbers just. I've also seen a lot of Canadians say, like, you got to prepare yourself. You're a Canadian going to Vegas in the dead heat. So be prepared okay. that it's hot. All right. Most of the time, we never even leave the casino. That's what I was thinking. If it's that big, why am I going to go outside? It's hot. I'm not outdoors. I'm indoorsy. I'm staying inside. <laughs> One year, um, a friend of mine, we, we were teaching the pet first aid class. And so we were just in the building the entire time. And the day we went to leave, we stepped outside. First thing, the heat hit us. And then not only the heat hit us, it's the sun hit us. And it was yeah. like, oh my God, I'm blind. I'm blind. Oh I can't yeah. I, we spend... I don't see the sun for five months out of the year. It's gone. Well, I'm now here in the Pacific Northwest. Okay. And what is supposed to be sunny squim. Okay. Um, oh, but not it... so much. Well, not so much. I'm looking outside right here and it's um, overcast. Yeah. And it'll we're, be, we're over- yeah, until spring, yeah. it'll be overcast. Yeah. Same here. But we moved from Alberta to Ontario because Alberta is like 10 months out of the year. It's winter there and it's winter, like minus 40. It's winter. And so now we're in Ontario where, it, you know, you get eight good months a year. So I cannot complain if the rest of it is gloomy and doomy. And you cold. want to know why I moved to the Pacific West Coast? Because I was so done with snow. And it's not that it doesn't snow here. It does snow. But yeah. um, it's, not, it's not that bad. It's not the four feet of snow. What was doing mobile in snow like? I Because oh, mobile's not okay. a thing in Canada. We have a few mobile groomers, but in the States, it's huge. And I looked, when I sold my second storefront, I really looked into going mobile, but I was really worried about driving through snow in a big van to begin with. And then your lines freezing and everything. All right. I'll tell you all about that, but we're going to take a quick commercial break. And I'm doing a little bit of an experiment today uh, because yeah, I know I'll do anything to make my life easier. Okay. So rather than going in later and editing in this commercial, I'm going to play it right now. Let's see what happens. Working smarter, not harder. But running a dream business can be challenging. Wouldn't it be great if there were one piece of software that could help us with everything? Now there is. Groomer can not only handle client and pet information, but multiple groomer schedules, take payments, save those payments to your QuickBooks, and help set efficient routes for us mobile groomers. It's super responsive, 24 7 customer service, and tons more features. What are you waiting for? Check them out today at Groomer. That's G R O O M O R E dot com. So you can stress less and groom more. How was that? Welcome to another episode. That was lovely. Oh, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> okay, hold on. Just one second. There we go. Let's. Because then it went right the to the next. We to hear it twice. Well, no, that was actually an, a, a pre-recorded episode that just queued up right after that. So I got to watch that oh. now. Technology. What can I say? <laughs> okay. So, all right. Mobile grooming. So I was in Connecticut and I would, I've always would say that I would not do mobile grooming if I lived like a mile north from where I was. Now, where I okay. live in Connecticut, everything was like a hill or a curve. All right. So Ugh. my my philosophy was, in fact, my last van was a four-wheel drive. It would have to be. You know? And no, not that I was going to go out and snow and, and groom. It was literally, I had four-wheel drives out. If it started the snow, I can go home. And yeah. not worry about it because the problem with the mobile grooming vans is that they are rear wheel drive vehicles. Really? <laughs> they're high top and they're rear wheel drive. And let me tell you something, um, for those of us who, who are live in the snow areas, we know not to drive rear wheel drive vehicles in the snow. Yes. Like, do not handle or if, or if you just want to go out and have some spinning fun, they're great. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> around not so much 
and having such a tall vehicle too if it's windy i can imagine oh yeah that's it's a pocket of air in there right so there was a lot of weather considerations when doing mobile grooming all right so the first one of course was the snow and then the ice now in the northeast <clears throat> they do a really good job of clearing the roads literally there would be like three feet of snow and in two days the roads are perfectly Ooh. fine all yeah right? and two days meaning i lived on a side street in two days my roads would be i could go out on my own road and you know okay. what? and you kind of expect that now here where i am now where it doesn't snow that often they have no idea all right I stay yeah. off the road because I'm not getting on the road with these people because they have no idea how to drive on it. I never thought of that. I had noticed that when we moved to Ontario, that people freak out as soon as there's like, a, you know, a half an inch of snow on the ground, everybody can't drive. But we, when we lived in Alberta, you would just make up your own lane and everybody was fine. Yes. Because we're so used to just driving with no lanes because you can't see anything. And everybody was pretty confident, but then we moved here and I really, I really noticed a difference and I never really thought about it until you just There was that. the first, there was a dusting of snow, a, literally a dusting. Okay. And I didn't get garbage pickup because the, the company wasn't going to drive on the snow and okay. You know what? Thinking back, maybe that was a good idea because they're driving big old garbage trucks. And yeah. They don't know yeah. how to drive on it. You know what? Go home pick up my garbage another day. I'm going to be right. okay. I really don't want to have a garbage truck being towed out of my front yard. No, I don't need that tipping over into my house. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you know what? Yeah. Okay. So I was annoyed at first. And then afterwards, I'm thinking, oh, you know, yeah. maybe, maybe that's a good idea. Yeah. So I see you have a ton of Barclay awards back there. Oh, yeah. Oh, you want to hold on a second? Yeah. This is the one I got framed. Ooh. Contribution. Oh, I saw that one. I saw you post that one on Facebook. That's a yeah, nice one. That is going to get, I'm not sure where I'm going to put it up. I'm probably going to move some yeah. of those because that's heavy. I need like a beam <laughs> to put that up. Yeah. That's basically held up with sticky tape. <laughs> that's how mine's hung up right now too. Because they're a funny size. Yeah. It's hard to find a frame to fit them. Yeah. Well, you know what? The frame shop did a really nice job of it. Oh yeah. I'll have to, maybe I'll have to get a custom framed. Yeah. Uh, and I went to I Michael's, which is a, uh, I don't know if you have Michael's up in Canada. We have those. Oh, okay. we don't have the fun stores like Joann's and there's another one you guys have home goods or something. There's really cute stores, but we do have Michael's. All right, their, their framing department did that. Yeah. Well, then I'll have to take mine and get it framed because I can never find a frame to fit it. Yes. It's, you know what? And it didn't cost me that much money. I think I paid yeah. like maybe 130 bucks. Oh, so it'll be 180 here. <laughs> maybe. Oh, probably. Probably 240 or whatever. <laughs> All right. I didn't, I did not consider it. I thought it was a well worthwhile investment. <laughs> oh, it is. It still is. You need, you know, it, those are something to be so proud of. I, yeah, I almost hit the floor when I found out I was nominated. And did you ever, like, did they ever email you and say like, Hey, Mary, you were nominated or did people no, just no, tag, I get tag me on Facebook. Yeah. And sometimes, Facebook. yeah. And sometimes not all the tags came through. And so like, right. I get tagged for one and then I go over that. Oh, that one. And usually I get, I'll, I'll be notified of it via, cause somebody will send me hey, congratulations. and I'm yeah. like, for what? <laughs> yeah. You're like, great. Thanks. For, for. You know? I think that's how that happened to me. It was like, oh, congratulations. And I was like, thanks. Why? <laughs> so anyway, I'm going to say I like your videos are wonderful. I just, I just Thank really want to reiterate that they put a smile on my face. I'm literally on the floor laughing whenever you do a husband. Cause I'm like, yeah, you got that one. Yeah. Correct. Good. I got lots more of those coming in the new year. Cause I think those are the ones I, I like thoroughly enjoy doing the most. They make me laugh. <laughs> um, 
And that's why I do these videos is to, you know, we have a hard job, so we need to make light of it sometimes. I try to make it a, them a little bit educational towards the public as well to see what their dog groomers are dealing with on a daily yes. basis and that our job is not easy and we are just doing our best to take care of your pets and, um, but also to make groomers laugh and like laugh at ourselves a little bit, lighten the mood and have fun. Yes, absolutely. All right. So, but you know, getting Austin out to the mobile. So you have whether and I will reschedule at the drop of a hat. Yeah. Good. You have to, uh, it's best. You have to, you know what, if my van goes down and it's even yes. problematic today because the supply issues. Right. All right. The customization itself, if they just start working on it, is still like a two month process. Right. You know? And that's if they're wow. hoofing it. Um, and, but if you can't get a van and now there's a queue in front of you, it could be six, eight months before you get a mobile grooming van. That's a long time to be out of business. Yes, it is. Yeah. All right. And it's not like we can go over to enterprise and rent one. Right. So, you know, take care of yourself, take care of your vehicle. Yeah. Um, Yeah. You also have to be careful of driveways. All right. Um, there were clients and, and it's not just the snow and the ice, it's the wet leaves. Wet leaves are as bad as snow and ice. Oh, I would have clients, they would, towards the end, they knew just to text me a photo of their, of their driveway. Right. All right. Cause some places I couldn't park on the street. It was not feasible to park on the street, nor was I walking up or down an icy driveway. Right. No. So you bring yeah, me one thing to fix your van. It's another thing to fix a broken leg. Yeah. And I literally slipped on someone's driveway um, and had asphalt like embedded in my hand. <gasps> yeah. And oh. you go to the emergency room and they're just not even giving you a local to pick out the asphalt. They're like, hold still. Oh, oh no. I'm like, oh, doesn't my insurance cover <laughs> covering a, a local here? I'm sure they yes. Do. If they don't, I'll like pay for it. Something. Yeah, anything. No. That hurts. No. Yeah, I'm a big baby. I used to, I was the toughest in my 20s. I was invincible. I was tough. I would get like, I got numerous tattoos and piercings and blah, blah, blah. And it was something like the second I hit 30, I don't know what happened, but I'm a big baby. If I can avoid pain at all costs, I will. Yeah. <laughs> I have nothing found, to do with it. I have found as I get older, I want things to be as easy as possible. Same. Exactly. Yeah. Give me the numbing cream. Give me the anesthetic. Give me the painkiller. Thank you very much. Yes. Yes. Okay, I'm not, yeah. I'm not winning an award for being the toughest out there. No, no, no. If I need Tylenol to go to sleep. Yeah. I'm going yeah. to take the Tylenol. I'm going to, just because I want to go to sleep because I'm not going to sit there all night and pain thinking, oh, I'm a, I don't want to yeah. take. Oh, something. I should have taken that time and all. Yeah. The same goes for, you know, difficult dogs. I used to really pride myself on um, grooming really like either aggressive dogs or dogs that have been sent out of other salons or dogs that needed to be sedated. And I would say, I'll try them without the sedation and try to work through that. And I've really realized like, no, uh, give them the sedation. I want the sedation to do things that make me nervous or uncomfortable. So why wouldn't the dog like the sedation to do something that makes them nervous or uncomfortable or dogs who are, you know, just should go to the vet and be groomed by a vet groomer. You know, we, we're, nobody's winning an award for being the best at grooming difficult dogs or whatever. I, I feel like whoever's going to be more comfortable in each situation well, you know, and I'm going to just walked in. What can I do for you? Okay. I will be out in a second. Thank you. Sorry about that. No, Working that, moms. <laughs> well, you know what? And that's fine too. Cause usually it's for those who are watching YouTube, we got Pooh Bear here. Hey, Pooh. Oh, Pooh Bear. Yeah. yeah. Do you have a sling that he sits in or does he just sit in a shirt? No, he's sitting in my sweatshirt. So he's underneath my sweatshirt. That's really cute. And he just happily sits there all day. Oh yeah. He will sit here all day long. You should long. get one of those um, sweaters that have the big pocket. I, I have one of that and it's kind of a tight fit. 
Oh, I was going to say he might not fit. I think they're mostly for cats. Yeah, it's just a little bit too small for him. Yeah. And what That's will set good. him off is if my husband comes in. Because then it's oh. like, oh, this is mommy and me time. This is our spot. Oh. You are not allowed to come in here. And what he does will he do? Listen. Does he growl? Does he get mad? Oh, no. He's like an alien bursting out of my chest. <laughs> Pooh bear. He's ignoring you. <laughs> I'm used to it. It's fine. I'm a mother. I get ignored all day. <sighs> okay. Yeah. Except if you open up that bag of potato chips and then you're surrounded by everybody. Oh, I swear they can smell the chocolate bar from the driveway. If I'm like eating McDonald's fries in the driveway, they're looking out the windows like, we want some. <laughs> yeah, I have found I could yell and scream with my kids and they can't hear me. But if I silently yeah. open up a bag of potato chips, all of a sudden they're right here in front of me. It's true. And then you can say, ha ha ha, we're just doing chores. I'm going to close the chips up now. Get your laundry. <laughs> but that might be, you know, sometimes you got to realize what works, you know what? And if you want their attention, you know, like with my dogs, I'm so spirit was blind. I was just going to compare them to dogs. <laughs> so, so, so spirit was blind and he would go out in the backyard. The yard was fenced and I would want him to come in and he would be like, I'm blind. I can't find my way back. I don't know where I'm at. He would play the blind card with me. Right. And then come pick I, me up. <laughs> no, he's a husky. I'm not picking him up. Oh, we're not picking you up. Yeah. But. His weakness was squeaky toys. Oh. So I would so squeak would a toy. Exactly where that squeak was coming from. And he wants his squeaky toys. And I could see him being really pissed and like stopping his feet, coming back into the house because he had no choice because it was his squeaky yep. toy to come get it. Oh, but he could fall, he could find the squeaky toy, no problem. He just couldn't follow your voice. Oh no, he knew the backyard like the back of his hand. He could come in right. if he wanted to. He had a ball yeah. chased in the backyard. That dog never ran into the fence, never ran into the the tree line. Never. Was he always blind or did he go he was blind born, as well? Yeah, he was born with glaucoma. So literally he, okay. he was born blind. So that was a normal occurrence for him. Yeah, but he would play the blind card every now and again. And yeah, you could literally yeah. see him putting his head up. I can't see. I don't know where I'm at. <laughs> if you showed him a chewed shoe, he'd go, I don't know. <laughs> it wasn't me. <laughs> no, but he loved his squeakies. He loved his squeakies. But anyway, oh, the point being there, <laughs> find out what works. And if opening yeah. a bag of potato chip gets three kids front and center, then that's what we do. Did I open up this? Yeah. I didn't mean to do that. We can put this away. Yeah. Oh, now that you're here. <laughs> Since you're here, maybe you can do all your chores. That's what my kids are home doing today. They have a PA day from school. So they are home doing chores. And my son just came in to remind me that I didn't give them their money for doing chores. So. Oh yeah. Very well, important. Priorities. Okay. So it's pay up, mom. Pay up. <laughs> you know, so my kids got an allowance too. But you know what? When we would buy stuff, price was never a consideration. All right. Right. So we're in the mall and Sears and JC Penny on either end of the of the mall. So they're looking at watches. And now they have to use their own money for this. Right. So the three of yeah. them are around the table of watches and they notice the price on them. And they're like, you know, they have these cheaper at JCPenney. They're very Good. frugal with their own money. As they should be with their own money. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But if I was buying it, there would be no mention made of, oh, hey, mom, you know what? You could save a couple oh. bucks by buying what we want at the store down at the other end of the mall. Of course. Of course. My son is very conscious of those things. He says, you know, he'll think things through spending my money. My daughter, on the other hand, no, she's just like a baller spending mom's money, tapping debit cards wherever she can. She's, <laughs> but like you said, when it comes to her money, oh, 
no, maybe she doesn't need that 20th lip gloss or, you know, yeah. She, and she'll think through, you know, how many chores. It's like me when I look at something, I'm like, how many shih tzus is this going to cost me? How many golden doodles is this going to cost me, right? And she'll look at it. How many chores is this going to cost me? Well, maybe it's not worth it to buy it. Okay, but you know what? That's actually um, how I always figured out pricing too. So when I went mobile, right. all right, when I went mobile, the reason I went hourly in the first place was because I worked corporate and I had, I had the reputation for working with difficult dogs. Right. Yeah. However, they would take you longer to do. Absolutely. And I'm not being compensated properly for doing those dogs. No. Yeah. So I figured when I went mobile that if I was going to continue to do them, I wanted to be compensated properly. As you should. As I should. Yes. I didn't have a whole yeah. lot of them because my prices were fair to me. Right. Good. Because you know what, if those dogs went to a vet, like a vet groomer, yeah, that's a, a that's a three hundred dollar bill right there. Exactly. Yes, I can remember one of my and I kept this message on it for a, my phone for a while. So this woman calls me up because she saw me somewhere, and I was there as a personal favor, so it wasn't like my regular area. And she leaves me like this. You remember like answering machines with the the limited amount of phone. Honest. Yes. So uh, she leaves me literally an entire thing on my, my answering machine going on about Bella and princess, her two shih tzus. And their whole life story. The whole oh life no, story. about how all the other mobile group, all the other groomers must've been mean because the Bella and princess would never have been anyone if they weren't. No, mean. of course not. Of course not, no. you know, it's and she was going princess. on and on about this. Right. So yeah. I'm like, okay. Yeah. Red flag, red flag, red, red flag, flag, red flag, flag, red flag. <laughs> so now back in 2002, my prices were $50 an hour. So it's not comparable to today. Yeah. Right. So she calls up, I call her back and I'm like, oh yeah, you know what? Listen, that's not my right. That's out of my area. So my hourly rate for out of my area, $75 an hour yep. each. And I said, depending on their behavior, that your dogs could be anywhere between an hour and a half and two hours. Okay. Yeah. And each. I have found yep. each, and you could see her doing the math in her head. And I have always, and she goes, but that's $300. <clears throat> and, you, and I always uh -huh. know I always knew when people knew that their dogs were really well behaved because they would go right to the to the high end because they knew right. that. Okay. I'll yeah. have to talk to my husband about that. I said, you do that and you call me back and we'll set up an appointment. Yeah. You never call me back. Of course she didn't. Nope. I always quote people high like that too when I hear the red flags coming through or they talk about how their last rumor, blah, 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 blah. And then I'll just quote them higher. And if they come in and they're lovely and the dog is lovely and they're on a regular schedule and blah, blah, it's going to be a good relationship. Then maybe I'll charge a little bit less, but it's never happened where they actually come in. When I quote I've only had when one quote, 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 quote. in that case, and it was a Cocker Spaniel. And um, again, 2002, I quoted her between 60 and 85. All yeah. right. And the dog was lovely. It was a smaller Cocker Spaniel. She wanted the dog done every six weeks. It was a 10 buzz on the dog. And so right. I charged her 65. She goes, you know, I planned on 85 and she just paid me 85. And you're like, you're a lifetime client. I will keep you forever. I'll be here in six weeks. Yeah. See you in, see you in six yeah. weeks. Yep. Do you, would you tolerate, see, I don't, I'm at the point in my career, I've been doing this for 20 years. I don't tolerate any disrespect from human clients. I'll tolerate a lot from the dogs as long as their human client or their humans are willing to work with me and the dogs, as long as they'll come on a regular basis and I can get the dogs used to being groomed. That's fine. I'll tolerate a lot from dogs, but humans, I have this much patience. Yes. No, I was, um, I was calling one of my clients to, to, again, this is all before text and stuff like that. So I call yep. them up and I'm setting up the next appointment, the actual day and time. 
And in the background, the wife is going, tell her about Marilyn, tell her about Marilyn. And husband goes, I'm not telling her about Marilyn. No, no, tell her, Mar Marilyn needs a groomer. I just go, I'm not telling her about Marilyn. And then this is going uh -huh. back and forth and I'm just listening to this, right? And he goes, what's going to happen if Mary fires us because of Marilyn's behavior? Because we recommended her. And the wife goes, oh, never mind." Oh, uh, and you're like, should I be writing this Marilyn's number down and blocking it in my phone? And so he goes back on the phone and I go, good call. You know, yeah. let's get yeah. that appointment set up. I think Marilyn was a friend of theirs that yes. nobody wanted to groom their dog. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Marilyn was apparently a pain in the butt. So Marilyn was excused from her last groomer. Her last groomer just wasn't returning her calls for some strange reason. Yes. Oh, yeah, that weird, eh? how that happened. Yeah, so I don't think she's in business anymore because she doesn't return my phone calls. Yeah, it's so strange. But my friend still goes to her. I don't understand. I don't understand that. She's she's not no. she doesn't have any room for me to come in every six months anymore. Yeah. She's booked for the next 10 years. It's crazy. I, her prices wow. went up, you know, like a lot. <laughs> You know, uh, and, and, and you we know, can't having, give away too many of our tricks here. We can't give away too many secrets. No, well, actually, only pet professionals are listening here anyway. Oh, good. Then we can give away all of the secrets. We can give away all our secrets. So I had this woman with two mini poodles. Okay. And I hated doing these poodles. I hated them for, yep, for clean feet. They would pull on each of them. Oh, yeah. So eight Those legs mini pulling. Poodles. Okay. Yeah. And then would go limp for the rest of the groom. I was like shot. Um, <gasps> and every time I was there, I was raising her price 10 bucks and she was paying it. Okay. Yeah. It finally got to the point that I'm in the van and I'm thinking, all right, this is ridiculous. I can't keep raising her price $10. What's my happy price that I would come out here. And I literally got up to $500 per dog. And I still didn't want to groom these dogs. Okay. So now we're Oh my gosh. And I'm thinking, you know what? For a thousand dollars, I don't want to come out here. All right. And I, and I stopped there because I'm not sure yeah. where I would have ended up. Yeah. And wow. A thousand dollars. And I, I groomed the poodles. No, I was done <laughs> because I yeah. would be in so right. much pain afterwards. My yep. wrist would hurt. And then my back yep. and shoulders would hurt. From just these two little dogs. And then not only that, yeah. I started to hate doing all poodles because of those dogs. I, I totally understand that. And you know what? They could go to another groomer down the street and that groomer could love them. Yes. So why bother putting yourself through it, right? Yes. Yeah. There was a groomer in my area before she retired and we called her the wheat and terrier whisperer. She That's not something I want to be. She, but she loved them. They yeah. were literally milk for her. Why am I hurting myself? Exactly. Now, see, I'm exactly. the min pin whisperer. All right. They melt yep. for me. I can cut their yeah. nails. I can do anything for them. So send me your min. Yep. Well, not anymore. I'm retired. So don't send me anything. Yeah. I don't want them anymore. Don't yeah. want them anymore. There's, there isn't really a breed that I overly bond with more than a, like I'm a terrier person. I love terriers. So you can send me all your spicy little terriers. I'm happy to do them. The little ones though. I don't want Airedales <laughs> unless they're, Here's... unless they are this good. I don't want them. <laughs> but you know, this is what I found, at least in my area, right? So we and terrier owners were not really aware of what they had because right. they think they be... have a fluffy, happy, little, <clears throat> cute dog. Airedale people know exactly what they have. It's true. You're very right. So I would groom an Airedale and it would not be to perfection and they'd be okay with yeah. it. Well, yeah, he's a jerk. That's fine. Yep. Okay. But the wheat and terrier people? Yes. You have and one hair is out of place. Yeah. Oh my gosh. You are so spot on. We have this Wheaton and I find when I was in Alberta, the people who were breeding Wheatons were doing a phenomenal job. These dogs would come in and they great temperaments, great hair, you know, oh, I'm coming back. All right. I'm back. Great. And it was just the breeders in the area. We're doing a great job with these dogs. 
And unfortunately where I live now, I don't think that the breeders are breeding the best dogs. They've got bad temperaments. The worst attack I've ever had was two years ago from a 16 week old Wheaton puppy. And out of nowhere, he just chomped all the way up my arm and up to my neck faster than light speed. And, um, and the owner still with that dog wanted him in a show trim, a perfect show trim for the rest of his life. And he's been to four other groomers in the area. We all talk about him. And even still, he needs to be sedated now. He's two or three years old. She still wants him in the perfect show trim. She shows all these other groomers a show trim that I did on a Wheaton. And she's like, I want him to look like this. And we're all like, he needs to go to a vet and be sedated and shaved down once a year, like in a 10 nose to toes, but she refuses. She just wants this dog to look perfect, but that's she fine. can't that's... even get the muzzle on him. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, like, okay. Yeah, no. Okay. No, it's, it's inhumane to the dog. It's yeah. inhumane to us. It's, yeah, but she just can't get it through her head. So you saying that about wheat owners, just, I was like, yep, you're very correct. And Airedale, any Airedale I have groomed, all of the owners have been like, he's wild. I'm surprised you can even get near him. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, I've, you know, I've never actually experienced, I've experienced dog aggressive Airedales, um, but I haven't had one that's been overly aggressive other than nails. Well, that's why a lot of the Airedales do well in mobile vans because they are yeah. dog aggressive. There's no, yeah, there's no stimulation. There's nothing, yep. right? Mm -hmm. So and I'm not going to hand strip one. That's for sure. I don't hate myself that much. No, 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 no. <laughs> I'll clip it all day for you. <laughs> all right. So Marcia. Yes. Yes. <laughs> what, what, what's in your future? Oh, wow. If I had a crystal ball, I could tell you, you know, I think I like to I like to think that I have a nice plan and a direction on where I'm going, but it usually just goes this way and that way and up and down. And I always end up somewhere crazy. So um, this year, I would really like to focus on um, growing my business as well. We have a new girl coming to work with us in the new year, which I'm looking forward to. And I would like to focus more on social media, maybe getting some education out there. And yeah, that's what I'm, this year, that's what I'm trying, I'm going to try to focus on and um, living more intentionally, thinking things through before I do them. So yeah, I'm already on yeah. thinking about what I'm going to do when I finish teaching. So, which is why I'm learning. And I did photography years and years and years and years ago. But you know what? All of that knowledge right. is gone. And so, which means I need to like relearn it again. Which is good because I'm sure everything has just completely changed. Uh, you know what? Yes and no. Yeah? Yes and yes, yes and no. But the thing is, all of the skills and all the knowledge I had about how things work, I no longer have. Right. So I need to go back and like relearn things and start practicing over again. And you know what? Maybe it'll be a hobby. Maybe it'll be a career. I don't know yet. Yeah. Are you busier now that you're retired? You know what? I, I'm retired from grooming. Okay. You're right. What I'm doing now is full time. All right. Yeah. But, but it's full time on my own, on my own um, terms. So, right. You don't have to be up by nine o'clock for your nine 30 appointment or nope. whatever. It's so I did rigid. There's no schedule. I got up early for you Thank because you. I'm on the Pacific. <laughs> what time is it there? Well, right now it's That's just right. 10, which means to be ready. Oh, so for I probably messaged you at 5.00 AM this morning. Don't worry. I have do not disturb on my phone. <laughs> okay, guys. Um, but the thing is, I don't do like nine o'clock unless I have to do nine o'clock unless there's like a real reason for me to do it. Right. Good for so, you. So, but I did for you because I wanted you here. Well, thank you. I hope it was worth it. Oh no, this is fun. I this hope is I'm really not fun. a message in half an hour and be like, ah, oh, we don't need you on the other podcast. <laughs> no, 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 no. And in fact, fine. right. So I'm recording two podcasts today. 
the first one, which is nine o'clock, my time was for women petpreneurs. And then Marcia, Marcia will be back with me and Chris Anthony, which will be four o'clock my time, which is much better. Okay. <laughs> to record an and episode. Just, for- um, Go ahead. Yeah. I'm looking forward to it. And it'll be dark here by then. So we won't have this nice natural light. I might have to set up my ring light because it gets dark by three o'clock here now. So yeah, it'll be dark here. I'm like, I have to get, I have to get another yeah. light source because I have overhead lighting and yeah. it, it's my ceiling is high. So it's the lighting is not as good as it should be. So yeah, I definitely need right. some, some ring lights going on. I have one and it's like, eh, but I might get some stand lights and put them like on either side and that probably take care of the problem. Right. But whatever, you know what? I don't so, have and a I million. Just... I don't have a, go ahead, go no, ahead. I cut you off. I don't, I don't have a million dollar podcast budget. So. Right. Same with me. I know. I'm like, where's the social media money? That's not true. I do. I like to talk about social media because I think it's such a, a good thing to use to, oh, what's the word I'm looking for? My mind just went blank. It's like you put me in front of a computer with a microphone and everything. My mind just goes, nope. (laughs) But I think social media, you can make money off of it. And I think that especially as dog groomers, we should be using it more because a lot of people like to see behind the scenes with what we're doing. And they like to see the cute and fluffy puppies. And we have access to content that's readily available and easy to use. And you can make a little bit of extra income on top of what you're already doing with what you're already doing. So, um, yeah, I think that's, I think it's an added bonus. Okay. then. so thank you so much for taking time out of your day to be here. I really appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you for having me. This was great. (laughs) So. Everybody join us next week when I interview another woman making a difference in the pet industry.